Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Okay, welcome back everyone here live here in Las Vegas for HP Discover 2014. I was going to say HP OpenStack 2014 because we're going to talk about OpenStack. I'm John Furrier, this is theCUBE. Our next guest is Lisa Marie Namphy and Bill Franklin, who's uh, been a VP of engineering, he's been doing strategy, doing a lot of OpenStack thought leadership, a lot of engineering kind of work going on at HP. Uh, welcome to theCUBE, guys. Thank you, so Thank great you. to be here. Your first time, <laughs> Bill's been on before. We've interviewed you multiple times. Um, first question I want to ask you guys, HP Cloud, the party last night was fantastic. Did you have a good time? <laughs> it was a great time. Lots, yeah. of, lots of customers there, lots of HP people there, lots of really leading industry people like yourself there, John. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, Hopefully even, you did too. And then Dave Vellante showed up. It was a good time, but I'm, I'm impressed with the talent that's put together. So we were commenting earlier this morning. Um, the team is significantly grown uh, at many levels. What are the highlights? Share with the folks out there real quick, Lisa, on, on, on what's going on in terms of the team, the new additions to the roster, some key moves you guys have made. Give us the update. Yeah, so we've uh, we've got some heavyweights on the team, uh, some of your old friends like Sargalai, of course, um, and still you know, one of the leaders of our, of our business unit, but we also brought in Bill Hilf, who I believe you met uh, yeah. and we had on theCUBE yesterday. Um, and so we got Bill from Microsoft. Uh, he was one of the key key players behind Azure. Um, we also brought in uh, Zane Adams to run the, the business, the, the biz dev side of things, also from Microsoft. Um, and we brought Bob. in Carrie Bailey yeah. and Bobby Patrick, yeah, to on the sales and marketing side, uh, two more big heavyweights in cloud, and so a lot of talent, as you said. Great recruiting. So what's going to happen? How's that ball going to move down the field? Obviously, this foundation we were coming, I saw her many times. Foundation's been set, you're building, you're hanging the iron, to put the analogy of a skyscraper together. Uh, what's going on? Uh, Bill, give us, a, give us a taste of the key things that are yeah. happening, and so, quickly. Yeah. Yeah, so as you saw yesterday, both at the party in terms of the people we got there, we've also really built out the engineering organization. So OpenStack, big open source community, lots of different key projects. Five of the main project technical leads for OpenStack now work for HP. We've got a large amount of engineers. So what we did in early May is we rolled out our HP Helion OpenStack Community Edition and HP Helion OpenStack for the enterprise. These are two of the key distributions for companies who want to stand up hybrid clouds, private, managed, public. So we've been rolling that out. The other thing is one of the things that's been a, a barrier for adoption of OpenStack in the enterprise is concerns about the patent troll aspect. So just as we did with indemnifying Linux. I'll explain what that means before you get into that. Define patent troll. Um, individuals who basically sue companies that are using either open source or proprietary technology saying that they, they want to assert a right to a patent that they believe you're infringing. So if I'm a developer, I build some kick-ass, badass app um, on the cloud, and I use potentially what looks like a patent, I might not have deep pockets, I could be sued. And what you're saying by a patent troll, and you guys are doing something to help me, right. the developer. More what is that? More importantly, where we're doing it is around people who are standing up the infrastructure that's based on open source. So we don't want any of our customers to feel that by choosing to use OpenStack, they might be sued at a later date by a patent troll. It's so just indemnification. As, right, so we just as we had Linux, indemnified Linux 15 years ago, we're doing right. exactly the same yeah. thing now. It's so good stabilization, give some stability and comfort you got to it. people. We want people to be comfortable with adopting this new style of IT as rapidly as possible. That's good, that talks, about, that talks about trust. So one of the things we were talking to um, your guys earlier on the social side who have done an amazing job organically in the community, you guys are winning in the developer community. And I, when I talk to developers, certainly on the consumer side, they love Amazon and Google's getting their attention. Um, they kind of trust them, even though that you know it's it's a, it's a vendor. But when, when they look at HP and IBM, they go, "I don't trust those guys. They're big, the big company. They're going to suck me in and to their own proprietary agenda." That's kind of a perception, not necessarily against HP. It's a global perception. Mm -hmm. How do you guys win? Because you're winning right now in the market with OpenStack, yeah. doing well. How do you extend that and just steamroll over that perception to the developers out there? What's that message? Distribution, certainly indemnification helps. Bill, talk about that, that dynamic and what you offer for that trust. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I'll start and then yeah, I'll when did you finish start? that. The, uh, if you have been to any of our sessions here at Discover, it's all about open, open, open. I think every single presenter had slides on talking about open source, talking about OpenStack, um, talking about Cloud Foundry. We could talk a little bit about our crowd chat yesterday. We had a lot of fun with that with Cloud Foundry, um, to hooking in the Cloud Foundry Summit as well. It's all about open. We've built our foundation on OpenStack technology, we're going up the stack with Cloud Foundry, and we believe it has to be open, it has to be based on open standards, and, and of course we do protect our customers, that's what the indemnification is all about. Um, what we've done is we've made OpenStack easier, we've made it enterprise grade or commercial grade, so that our customers can actually use it because they don't have you know, 1,200 developers to try to figure all of this stuff out, so we've taken all the power of OpenStack, and then we've, we've made it easier for our customers to use. And I think the other thing, John, is the, um the way we're building a lot of the things for the new style of IT, we're doing it entirely out in the open, but we're also heavily engaged in the community. So you see us at places like OpenStack meetups around the world, at, at the Cloud Foundry Summit, we presented lots and lots of stuff at the OpenStack summits. So unlike maybe how we did previous revolutions of computing, we're actively involved in building this stuff in a collaborative environment, and I think that breaks down that barrier of distrust that you were alluding to before. And also, yeah, the enterprise is a hot area right now where there's, there's demand, right? And the consumer cloud, Amazon, will win there because the, the developers are right. comfortable, it's comfort, comfort for them, but it's a completely different development framework in the enterprise. And Bill, you have experience going back to your Sundays managing engineers and developers. You know, how, what, what can you draw from that to, to share some data around the enterprise developer environment? What should it look like? Because you know, developers could get good distribution with OpenStack in the, in the enterprise. What's, what's yeah. this enterprise developer environment and how is it different from say, straight up consumer? Well it's starting, it's a great question, it's starting to shift and change inside the enterprise. I mean, years ago in the client server world, it was very much a waterfall development aspect inside the enterprise. And the same development tooling that IT vendors use and ISVs are using, Agile and Git and Garrett and those types of repositories and the DevOps sort of development model for bringing software as a service and cloud apps up, you're seeing enterprises begin to adopt that same set of methodologies. And the great thing for us is we're able to take all the tools we've built to help enable OpenStack, like continuous integration and deployment and others, and package that up and roll it out to the people who are trying to build things inside their enterprise to live that same sort of developer eco life cycle. Well, I want to get in and talk about the little book that you guys wrote here, um, Lisa Marie, that's fantastic. Show, show, show the book, um, OpenStack Technology, Breaking the Barriers. It's a, it's a uh, quick, quick study guide to get up and running with the enterprise. What's the, what's, what's the, uh, what's the book about? This book is about, um, it goes through a couple of different phases. It's, you know, there's a chapter called Why Cloud? So it, it starts at that level, why OpenStack? So one of the things I wanted to do, we get a lot of questions about, you know, what does HP, what, how, what does OpenStack mean to HP, but then also what does HP mean to OpenStack? And as Bill alluded to, we do a lot in the OpenStack community, and we have a lot of, you know, I checked the stack lyrics yesterday, we're number one in commits for Juno as of, as of yesterday. Um, we're always in the top five. We, we really, really believe in OpenStack, but we believe believe in making OpenStack as good as it can be, and then also incorporating that technology into what we do at HP. So the book kind of goes through all of that, and then of course, um, we just released our product, HP Helion OpenStack, so the last couple of chapters talk about what is HP Helion OpenStack, and what does that mean also to HP. Awesome, Bill, I know you got to get an airplane, but I want to get a couple questions in for you to end the segment. Is, sure. Is, um, what has been the most surprising thing to you around OpenStack and HP's uh, continuing role in it, both within HP, uh, and outside of HP, some of the big surprises that have been really interesting to you. So, the first one is just the mammoth rapid adoption of OpenStack. It's, it's in many ways one of the largest growing open source projects we've seen in, in the history of open source in quite a while. And HP, through Meg's leadership, is really transforming as a company, and our engagement inside a community like OpenStack now is, is so much more rich than it might have been two, three years ago. So it's a very, very active that way. I think the other thing that's just astounded me, particularly here at this Discover event, is how much our customers worldwide want to understand about hybrid cloud and how what we're doing with OpenStack and the community in general will enable them to do that. Because most of the big enterprises they understand the need for public cloud, but they really feel for them, it's going to be a hybrid solution. And how we use OpenStack across private, 
public and managed fits with the way that they're thinking. And that's really exciting for me. And I think it's going to be fun times in not only the OpenStack world, but in what HP's doing with cloud. Certainly the serviceability is a big part of that. Security and serviceability, um, orchestration, these are like hard problems. I mean, Sar was pointing them out in, our last, in his interview. Um, do you feel we're going to get around to getting those things buttoned up? I mean, I mean, you guys are bringing a lot to the table. Are you guys, is the community moving fast enough? What are you guys bringing to the table? Are you bringing new stuff to the yeah, table? So, so some of the things are we run, we run one of the big production grade OpenStack public clouds. And we take a lot of our experience of running that public cloud and the fact that we have many of our enterprise customers who burst to that public cloud and the things that we do around security there, bringing that into both the OpenStack community but also using our practices around how we run the public cloud to deliver it. So we've done a lot of work in security, a lot of work in orchestration, a lot of work in, this, in the places that will let companies adopt this quicker and faster. So whenever I come to an HP Discover, this is now our fifth year covering HP Discover, you know, both on we're a global glad you're level. Here. And, you, and we're going to work with you guys with the uh, VMworld and things of that nature and other collaborative things, especially the cloud, crowd chats, what I'm super excited about. But I always look for things, like I have an agenda. I want to go sniff out some new territory where the things that HP isn't telling me, right? You know, asking questions, probing in. Um, and one of them was developer, developer strategy. And you know, I was commenting on the intro this morning that given all the transformation stuff and the ship moving out away from the icebergs into the warm waters of a growth, the openness is clearly an HP thing. The open source with OpenStack is phenomenal. The software group's getting their act together. Um, and the developer opportunity is massive. If HP can win the developer market as a productive part of the ecosystem in the enterprise and in the cloud, it create great opportunity for the marketplace and HP. But I can't find who at HP <laughs> to talk to. Who, what, who are, who's working on this? Who at HP, I can't find, it's not clear to me, like, who at HP do I talk to to say, hey, I want to know what your plans are with developers? So, is there one person, is, there, is it still spread out amongst groups? Who do I talk to? So I would say there's, there's three people, and, but it's not spread out in the aspect of that way. Um, Martin Fink, who's the overall CTO for HP, is very interested in developer, and if you heard his, his uh, talk yesterday around the machine and the, the new OS he's building in that space, he's very interested in what the development stack looks like in that space. HP has thousands, tens of thousands of software developers, and the software development- Internally. Internally. Yes. And the software development that we provide for them comes out of Ramon Baez's organization, centralized HP IT. And then the third one is actually the CTO of software, who Lisa worked closely with when she was in, in uh, HP Software, Jerome Labat. Jerome is very focused on the developer sort of life cycle, the continuous development aspect, and the way that developers deploy what they build. So Jerome looks at how they, how they build it, how they deploy it. Ramon is concerned about the tools that our developer community uses and making them the best that they can be and looking at what he can do to bring those tools out to the market so, so not only HP can use them. And Martin's concerned about it because he's building the, the next platform for tomorrow on the machine. But you guys about. are also winning with developers. You've earned through OpenStack, and I mean, Monty Taylor and Eileen, we interviewed him yeah. at OpenStack. I mean, you guys are, through your own efforts, have ingratiated in and won the hearts and minds in the OpenStack community. So, you know, that's a significant yeah. opportunity. Who's doing the, And who's, I think if I could you? understand your question um, a, little, a little further, the, we, we are very focused on the developer community. We, are, we have built a developer platform that we announced uh, mm -hmm. last month and then more, more features yesterday. Uh, the HP development platform, HP Helion yep. development yeah. platform yeah. based on yeah. Cloud Foundry. And we're very active in, the, the name I mentioned, Zane Adam, he's very active in reaching the developer community. We, Bobby Patrick, my manager, we work very closely with, with Zane's team to try to figure out how we're going to go that last mile and get those developers to develop on our platform. And we've made it easy for them to do so, um, fun. Awesome. And as, yep, and you can, you know, we'll do more crowd chats with them. We have a lot of ways of reaching the development community and we'll do a lot what we did with OpenStack. We're going to do that with Cloud So Foundry you guys just well. checked one of my boxes for my, my objective last few interviews. Um, so the coordination, there'll be some coordination through Fink, basically what you're saying, Bill, right? Heavily, so heavy will coordination. Oversee, and he's got some open source chops. Yep. Share with the folks out there. Chops, Martin's. I think, is an understatement. <laughs> yeah. uh, Martin wrote one of the pivotal books on uh, open source business models almost 20 years ago. It was on the Linux board. 
Yeah, uh, very sharp Martin guy. On here. We gotta get Martin on the cube. I want to ask him what he thinks of the whole self-governance of these communities. OpenStack is doing very well right now through its self-governance. Is I think a really good showcase of how that's for operating effectively. Do you agree that the self-governance is working? Certainly within OpenStack. I think it's a, it's a well-structured, and you've interviewed Eileen. Eileen was pivotal in helping write a lot of the governance around that. She has yeah. a lot of experience. She's and I awesome. Think, I think the self-governance models are very, very, very dependent on the developers who govern it. It's, it's not only the, the legal structure of it and the rules, but the people who implement them and how well they follow them. And Monty does a great job corralling it. Bill, Lisa, and Marie, thanks for coming on. I want to give you guys the final word. Sh each share with the folks out there real quickly. Why is this moment in time in the, in the technology business and industry so uh, fun, intoxicating, uh, crazy, and good? Well, you, you guys, you've heard me speak a number of times. We're at the, the just tip of the third revolution of computing and this new style of IT, and it's just like the early days of client-server computing. Everybody's coming up with, with new ways of solving complex problems we haven't been able to solve in years, and it's just fun seeing the degree of innovation and the speed of that innovation. Yeah, and I think one of the most exciting things for me is the community aspect of everything. I, I'm so passionate about OpenStack. I love the fact that it's the fastest growing open source technology in the history of open source. I think it's just proof that community sourced things and community driven things will win in the end every single time. Well, congratulations. I, first of all, I agree with both those statements. It's really intoxicating if you're, in, if you're a tech uh, junkie like us and in, in participating. So it's really, certainly exciting, amazing time. So uh, thanks for coming. Congratulations on your success. Hey, thank and, you. Would you like to sign a book for you? <laughs> sure, absolutely. Give <laughs> okay, me a quick I'll signature. <laughs> She's a get well soon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do the devastatingly handsome John Kerr. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. I know you got to catch your flight. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back at this break. Thanks, John. Thank you.